So the topic of today, guys, is change your experiences, change your world, okay? So when we got this topic of change, we had so many ideas of what we could do and how it could integrate into all the different things uh, that we do. Uh, at one point, we were going to just go on this massive rant on how we want to change the world and make everything better and how you guys can all change the world. And you know, then we were going to talk about how experiences are what brings you happiness. And you know, it's been proven that experiences, not things, are what brings us happiness. And that's, that, that would change your world. And we're going to do this thing. And then Don't we're just like, you. fuck that. <laughs> We're not going to talk about any of these things. We're going to talk about some things that have been really powerful for us that have helped to change our lives. And we know that these experiences will change all of your lives too. Okay? So we're going to really lock this down. Um, so first of all, just a little bit of background on us for um, people that don't know us. Um, in a very small nutshell, basically um, we have a small farm about an hour and a half north of here, of Melbourne. Um, where we grow organic flowers and vegetables and we forage things from the wild as well. So this is our office. Uh, this is where we have been spending a lot of time in front of a computer these days and it's very draining. So if you do that, I understand. <laughs> uh, but this is the engine room of our business these days. And this is where we try and spend all of our time or at least most of our time. It's where we grow our flowers and our vegetables, our fruits, our herbs. And this is where everything comes from that we bring down to Melbourne, to bring to people, to bring to chefs. Uh, and it's really, for us, it's always been kind of the, the framework around that we've been able to talk about all the ideas that we've had. Uh, we have wonderful staff. Um, this is Pepper, who's hanging out at home, hopefully looking after everything. Um, but I think the key here is that we didn't always um, get to be around all of these beautiful things. Um, we both used to work in the city and have office jobs, so I used to be a speech therapist and Matt used to be a graphic designer. Um, and we didn't dislike our jobs, actually we really liked them, um, but a series of experiences led us to here, basically, to what we do now. Yeah, so basically separately but then together and more and more together, um, we just had these kind of realizations that we, if we, we just want to strip everything back and have a really, really simple life. Ideally, we'd be able to strip everything away and not have any obligations, don't have to do anything. But the fact is, you know, we've all got to eat, we've all got to uh, breathe air, we've all got to drink water. We, know, we need people around us, we need community, you know. We needed a whole bunch of things and we needed flowers, of course. And they were the things we decided um, were the most simple for us. Yeah. So we decided to strip our life back and have those things, and make those things the best they could be. Yeah, so we couldn't avoid them. We just wanted to make these things the absolute richest experiences that we could possibly have, okay? So, basically we used to like our life. This is me, my old graphic design. We used to like our life. <laughs> but now we love our life. Um, Can't uh, believe we put that in there. That was... <laughs> Good, you can't cut it out. Um, this is actually, uh, just to explain this slide, this is um, Paddle, who was a baby lamb, and um, we splintered his leg because uh, it got stepped on. Um, and in, I guess, conventional agriculture, he would have been put down. Um, but all we had to do is splint his leg, and um, anyway, now he's awesome. And yep. he's in the field. Unfortunately, he doesn't have this wicked limp, but he's just a normal sheep. <laughs> uh, so basically, we're going to break this down to seven experiences that we've originally totally unconsciously, we realised we'd fallen into these seven experiences that just shaped our lives. And, you know, day to day, things come and go, but these were the seven things that were always there and the seven things that really actually kind of brought out the joy and happiness in us. And that's what made us realise, like the topic of the talk, you know, if you change those experiences in your lives, then it really does shift your world. It changes how you feel about the world. And I think you can do anything, anything you want in the whole world, but these seven experiences for us, um, if everybody had just a little bit of them, we really think that as a society and a world, we'd, we would be so much better. Yeah. Um, so basically, they are... Observing, growing, gathering, nurturing, trading, seeking, and eating. So 
They're all connected. Actually, they're more connected like that. <laughs> uh, and we're going to go through them one by one. And hopefully, we don't talk for three hours. And then we'll bring it all back together at the end. Um, but basically, as a whole, what we realized was that um, these things are the basis or the foundations of a really great life. Um, and that they're all really traditional ways to live. So before we had plastics and waste and chemicals and all of these things, this was actually life, you know? And these are the things that make us really, really happy. Yeah, so when we strip it all back, and it doesn't mean you go pre-industrial on your whole life. This is about bringing these elements into your life in some small way, because they're just in us, you know? And, and they don't just nurture our necessities, like they don't just satisfy our necessities, but you know, we're humans, we have these social needs as well, we're social beings, and this system all together brings all those elements together and nurtures not just our basic needs, food, shelter, water, air, but it really brings the human element into it and the interaction, which we're really losing these days, you know? We've got to force ourselves almost to have these, these human interactions as well. So this covers everything. Yeah. And we think it's a path forward for the future for everyone if we can just integrate some of these elements. So, observe. Um, so I think on observe, basically what we're talking about here is the seasons. So um, you all know the seasons as four blocks. Um, which is great and a really great place to start. But basically the seasons move beyond that. They are 365 days of the year. And when we start to watch what's actually happening in nature each day, each change, you notice how much changes beyond those four blocks. Um, and you notice when, like seasons this year, for example, Summer was totally rubbish, basically, <laughs> and it's just been perpetually aut autumn. So that means that we had to change our growing to respond to that. But if we just kept with those four nice, neatly planned blocks, we'd be totally fucked, yeah. <laughs> basically. We just wouldn't have a crop in the garden right now. So this wheat, for instance, basically has grown wild out of our straw, all right? So this is the things that we mulch with, and we've created all these beautiful plants have come out of it. Wheat's great, I like wheat, and so we let it go. But we realise what an amazing indicator fields are, and like when things have sprouted, it's like an indication to plant stuff. It's like the soil's hit a temperature and you're ready to go, okay? And we would, you could be waiting and you have a thing written down in your diary that summer is this week, okay? And so you're just aiming at that planting time, and that's it. But all this stuff's up and you're like, oh shit, I can actually, I can get going four weeks earlier than I thought I could, all right? And then it's going to grow up and it's going to start setting seed at a certain time. That's going to be an indicator of something. And then that seed's going to be ready to harvest at a certain time. Or in this case, the birds ate it all. <laughs> and so the key is Which that is when you observe things, you realise it's kind of like breaking out of all these lines that we've put around ourselves, you know? It's about kind of getting back to nature a little bit. Because you can't, we can't get away from nature, you know? It's very easy to feel like we're away from nature in these buildings surrounded by buildings in the city, but there's still air, you know, we're still breathing, we're still drinking water, as treated as it is, and there's birds in the sky, and there's nature all around us, and I think we're, we kind of risk, especially in the city, losing that feeling that we're part of this bigger cycle of things, uh, but just because you're in the city doesn't mean you can't observe and get back in touch with that side of things, it'll change the way you eat, um, you'll really get to know what's in season, you know, go get a seasonal chart for what's like key for Melbourne right now, or if you come from Bangkok, find out what's exactly in season at all the times in, in Bangkok. It's about really getting to know actually the season. Don't just say, yeah, I eat seasonally. Go and find out what that means and feel how it changes each year because it just plugs you into that, that bigger picture, you know? It's incredibly nourishing on a deeper level. Yeah. And then we've got grow. Um, so for us, this is obviously really important because we grow all of our own food, but basically, get in the garden. Grow one thing. I don't really care what it is, but it'll change your whole world. Um, I think we really believe that we're meant to be in the soil in some way. There's studies now that talk about um, how soil um, is an antidepressant. It's good for your immune system, all of those things. We're built to be around soil. This is what our bodies know. And like Matt talked about um, with observing the seasons, if they all fit together. We're built to be in nature in whatever way you can. Yeah, and it sounds crazy, but until you've grown a potato, until you've dug up like a 
the first Dutch cream of the year and you're just like, this is a potato. And you've never, <laughs> it's been like three months before you've even eaten a potato because they all sprouted three months ago, sadly. And it's just, it just so, I mean, how often do we go and get a packet of chips or whatever or go and eat a bit of hot chip? You don't even think about what, you, what you're doing. Like to have these experiences and to like have the growing side of things, it just, it's like how observing plugs you into nature, like growing just plugs you into the actual origins of that plant, you know. So grow anything. If you've got a balcony, just put some herbs in and you're going to be so stoked when you put that basil on your fresh dish. You're going to be all Jamie Oliver and take it to the table. It's just, <laughs> just grow something, grow anything. Get, steal with your neighbours, no, don't talk to them and <laughs> take it. We'll or just like yeah. access, some, access you know, some land somewhere and set up a bloody allotment. It doesn't matter. Just like plug yourself into growing. It's a beautiful thing to do. And then on that is gather. So um, this is very seasonal. Um, so this comes back to knowing the seasons. But basically, if you can, this is probably a bit far from the city, but um, if you can sort of learn to gather or know what it means to gather from the wild. So just, you don't even have to do it. But I think it's really important to start looking at weeds, not as evil things but start looking at them as something that actually you can eat, most of them, and learning to identify them. Um, it just totally flicks your mentality around nature as well, because they're there for a reason, but we forget that. And I think we've, we just think they're evil and they should go. Yeah, basically. I think like on the one hand, there's this amazing experience that gathering is. Getting out, hunting for your food, foraging for your food, just shifts everything. You just you feel, normally we have to work so hard, especially for us as farmers, to actually raise food, to actually go out and experience something that's just doing its own thing, is, it just calms you down. It makes you realise that the world is an abundant place. We just kind of muck with it a little bit. So there's this beautiful experience, number one, in getting out, and that antithesis to the city, just getting out into the pine forest, although, you know, the pine forests aren't native to Australia, but it's a beautiful experience to get out there and get in them. And this the eeriness of it all. That's one thing. On the total flip, like, just forget that the city's the city and pretend this is a forest and get down laneways and find these weeds and find your food, you know. That, if they haven't been sprayed. If they haven't been sprayed. Go, like, <laughs> just, that's a super primal thing. There's nothing more primal than just being on this, like, search for food that you didn't make. You're not stealing it from someone's garden, like I said before. Just, just find just naturally growing things that actually will feed us. And we've been doing this for hundreds of thousands of years and it just, like, wakes that thing up inside you. It's just dormant in you and it just, it'll change the way you just think about your existence. You realise that this is actually a very natural thing to be living and a very natural thing to have that abundance around you. And then nurture, so um, nurturing animals basically, this is what this is about. Um, for a lot of people who knew me a long time ago, this image is pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I used to be a very hardcore vegetarian um, and Probably, I never worked with animals or anything like that. Um, but basically, when you uh, learn to nurture your animals and have that whole experience of raising them, you know them. They're a part of your, your family, you know? Um, and you see animal products um, really, really differently. Um, you see their animals' role in nature, um, and it just totally flips, I guess, how you see it. Of those things. Yeah, I think the key is like we're so in touch with our animals. We have chickens, we have cows, we have our sheep. To you know, they are the meat is one thing, and that's a whole relationship that's powerful in itself. But just understanding like how simple an egg can be, and how simple milk can be, or how complicated when the cow's in a shitty mood. But <laughs> when you just actually get in touch with all these foods, and it really puts those foods in place in your diet as well. I think. You know, a shelf of milk means nothing, but when you've actually had to go and procure that from the cow, it puts it in place. And as well, you realise that the cow's not always in milk, so maybe we can't have dairy all the time. Or the chickens aren't always laying, so we can't have eggs all the time. Or it sucks when you have to kill something, or something very rarely dies of its own volition. So really, it puts meat into that place where this isn't a natural thing to be having all the time, lots of, every day. So it's kind of shrunk animal products at large this like little 10 percent part of our diet we kind of feel like we're meat eating vegans so we've got this it's, again it's just shifted the balance i think it's like you can't eat bacon every day for breakfast sorry guys 
It's just um, not really sustainable and it's not how nature works. As much as our interns think that they can eat bacon every morning for breakfast, once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. And they learned that very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it was all gone. And I was like, well, that's it for a year. Yeah. And they were a bit depressed. So you realise you can't just have bacon anyway. The pig's not made of bacon. It's got <laughs> all these other bits. It's not just like legs of bacon and <laughs> carrying bacon. It's, it's more complicated. Yeah. Um, and then there's something that has actually totally changed our life um, in a really emotional way is trade. Um, trade being, sorry, <coughs> what trade is, is the exchange of goods or services without money, basically. <coughs> Taking money away from the equation. Um, huh, so I guess in our society, um, we rely so heavily on money. Um, but when you take that money away, uh, it totally changes your experience of any interaction. Um, so what we've found basically is that you can go and buy a product or you can trade a product and you have exactly the same product. Um, but with trade, you get a whole different experience. So you have a human experience basically. And that can give you so much more that money can't buy. And that human experience can be anything. It can be skills, a conversation, it can be anything. Um, but it's so much more than money. Um, and basically, in essence, we feel that if we took money away from a lot of equations in our modern world, we would be better as a society. We'd learn to understand each other more, we'd have more empathy for each other, we'd swap skills, our lives feel more abundant when we trade because everyone has something abundant to share. That's just how life is. Yeah, and it's not saying, I mean, we spend money, we use money. If, unless someone from Telstra is here and we can start trading for our bills, there's like, there's just elements in modern life that you can't get rid of and just think of them as modern life. There's so much in this kind of pre-industrial system, this whole system that we're talking about that really doesn't require money. Like, it's a totally modern construct that we're stuck in and it can be really powerful, but it can be really, it can defeat the humanity in all your relationships as well. Like we can, when I can jump online and order something from the other side of the world, and a robot receives the order, packs it and sends it on a thing, and the only man that's involved or human that's involved in this is the postman dropping it to my door, um, because we don't have robots in the Gambi. Um, <laughs> so to not have any human interaction, you can go into a shop these days and barely even look at the shopkeeper, and you actually had a human interaction, but you didn't. Like, it's so important to have to be forced to have these conversations with people and just, you know, you've got to decide what's fair. You've got to, like, Raven is hardcore to trade with. She's so, like, she'll rock up with something. This is, we used to bring down veggies every, every week and her mum would come and get veggies and she wanted flowers. Every week she wanted flowers and she'd be bringing something to trade for these flowers because we decided we weren't going to sell any flowers. We thought money around flowers is rubbish. And so she'd rock up with these things and you'd be like, all right. What, what do you want for it? <laughs> she'd be like, all right. And she'd be at the flowers and she'd be picking what she wants. So if there was money around this and mum would be watching going, oh, how much is that stem, that stem? Like she just went, it was just the most beautiful experience. And she'd come out with these amazing bunches and she hardly ever got a bigger bunch than that. It was always the cutest little thing. And she was like, these ones. This is like a moment of like, I'm taking these. I was like, that's good, good. And then off she'd go. And, and it's just this beautiful experience when you get rid of that you know, weird construct we've created. it didn't actually matter what she traded at all. You know, she brought so much joy to our days. That was enough, yeah. really. Let's be so honest, face like that, you could steal all the flowers, you wouldn't even care. <laughs> um, and then we have Seek. So just really quickly, this is just about um, food we don't produce. So we've talked about how we produce a lot of food, but um, it's just factoring in that some foods that we eat come from far away. So things like coffee um, are a really good example. They're such a big part of most people's lives, especially in Melbourne. Um, and it's just factoring in that actually those things come from somewhere. We get them in these nice packages and that's lovely. Um, but actually they are grown in soil and they are grown by a farmer somewhere. So it's just remembering that and bringing that back into the equation. Um, so sugar for us is something that we can't grow because of our climate. 
Um, yes, it comes from Australia, but it's still from far away. It's from North Queensland, which is like another country. I'm from there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically, we worked with this farmer to uh, get biodynamic sugar. It's literally cane juice that's um, evaporated, and that's what sugar actually looks like when it comes from the farm. It's green. You kind of will freak out a little bit because it makes everything green. It tastes like licorice. It's awesome. Yeah, um, and I guess we've chosen to seek these foods from far away in a really, really conscious manner. Um, and that has also brought with it a lot of joy. We get to work with these amazing people and we get to support them in doing really good things. We think about coconuts and all these things as being so normal and so accessible, but they're from miles away. Like we need to really focus on what's around us, focus on a regional diet. So for us, eating is a totally regional, local thing. We have these 5% sometimes foods that just add so much like spice to life. They're not just spices, but they add that extra bit and it just adds to the celebration of food. Because for us, food is always a celebration. Because when you're plugged into all these bits that lead up to it, you just can't not be mindful when you're eating a meal. You know? And it's really easy, actually. I still catch myself doing it when we eat out in Melbourne because you've sort of unplugged. And you just eat and you kind of enjoy the flavours and it's done. And you don't really pay attention to what you're doing as such. At home, it's just impossible. Because we're either, we might be eating peaches as milk or we might be we might be eating that's one of our cow. lambs that we've raised. <laughs> Sorry, that's a cow. Um, or, you know, our eggs have come from our chooks and we know which egg, which chickens laid it because it's the blue egg and that's the aracana. Like, we know, it's, you, you just got to pay attention to it then. But I think the thing is, um, the main key is we eat a really seasonal and regional diet. And basically, that makes our bodies feel so good. That is as simple as it is, is we feel better doing this than anything we've ever done before. And I think that's saying a lot. That is just what our bodies are made to do. Yeah, and everyone can eat. It's not just about eating, it's about getting back in touch with those traditional methods, those, the souring and the, you know, making it, like we've learned to make wine and it's been the most profound experience and it's shifted how we think about wine forever. And so it's just about plugging into those, just taking it back, stripping everything right back, okay? Um, so there are our seven things basically that we think that if you just had a little bit of them in your life or experience one of them that they will change your life they'll just change how you see the world if you just trade once with one person it'll flick your view of money if yep. you just grow one plant basically we're just going to leave you with um a few practical takeaways um, that will help you to put any experiences into your life. So we have four things that we think are really key. All right, number one. So experience something even if it's only once. So we just talked about those seven things. If you just do them once, it'll change your world. So we all are relearning all the time. Don't just, yeah, just experience them. Don't just worry. Just try it, don't, because we all get so... You know, these are all great ideas, but you don't have to just like own them. They don't have to be like your whole life and just shift yeah. everything as soon as you walk out this door because that just is negative on you. Just go and try one. And then if you like it, do it again or try another one or do whatever. Just start to bring these things into your life, but don't judge yourself on how much you can. Just have a crack. And we're not saying you all have to quit your jobs and like go and be hippies in the bush or anything like that. We're just saying just experience them. But it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second one is don't be afraid to fuck up. So this is really key. If you make a mistake, learn from it. Do not worry if you fuck it up. We wouldn't be here if we hadn't fucked up a lot of things, basically. Yeah. <laughs> like, you may not have grown a tomato plant before. Put it in the ground. If it dies, it's totally fine. You've yeah. learned something. Don't worry about it. Just go buy another one. <laughs> the plant does not care. It's just like, the whole point is the participation in these experiences, just having a crack at, uh, at, at doing them and integrating them into your life. There's really no wrong answers. The, the results that we're talking about and making you happier and enriching your life, it has nothing to do with success. Like a kid has no idea about success. They're just doing what they do and that's all it is. Just do it, okay? Don't be afraid. Um, the third one 
is talking to strangers, which we got you all to do. So well done, you've done that. Um, so basically, if you talk to strangers, this just opens your mind. Um, it's kind of the first step to trading. So the more that you just talk to people, the more you start to understand them, the more empathy we have, and then the closer we are to sharing with each other and sharing things. Yeah, it's very hard to trade when you don't talk. <laughs> and finally... The fourth thing is remember that nature is actually a thing. It's real. We can't avoid it. I think that in our modern world, we like to sort of pretend it doesn't exist a little bit, but it's always going to be there for your entire life. And you can pretend that none of those experiences that we've talked about matter, and you can leave this room and go, those guys are fucking nuts. <laughs> but the fact is that you are nature, and you are surrounded by nature, and they are natural things to do, and they're going to change how you think about the world. They're going to change how you relate to people and how you relate to the bigger picture, okay? So that's it. So now question just like time. idiots again. <laughs> that's um, all. So yes, this is question time if you have any. Let's first give a big hand to Matt. <laughs>